Good day, Coach Jude. My name is Jun Angelina Maraneta. I am 8 years old, living at Giwan Days Road, Sambonga City. And today, my role in this video presentation is to give the overall introduction. Are you ready? Let's go! So today, I am presenting with my group about the 14 learner-centered physiological principles, its background, and its contribution to the learner. So centered learning approach, we are also going to share our insights before the end of our video. And we are the study hub number eight. So every children have their own difference from their physical development, especially to those children that has a mental disorder or may kapansanan. So iba-iba ang kanilang pananaw sa kanilang sarili dahil sila ay kakaiba sa mga batang normal ang pangangatawan. And because of their disabilities, is my tendency na hindi nila ma-enjoy or makipaglahok or playing with other kids. So every individual have different personalities may also impair physical development. So impair physical development means refers to the advancement and refinement of motor skills or in use of controlling their bodies. It also relates to the growth and skills development of the body including the brain, muscles, and sense. So the impaired physical development, this is when the children explore themselves or learning how to walk, controlling their bodies, or balancing themselves. Thank you for listening. Good day, Coach. My name is Akina Rofi from Bitalet I. I'm going to share my insight about my assigned topic before the end of our presentation. My report is all about cognitive and metacognitive factor. Number one, nature of learning process, which means learning is an active social process. Social constructivist scholars view learning as an active process when learning when learner should be learned to discover principles, concepts, and facts themselves. Number two, goals of learning process means goals of learning process is a personal learning are about improving students learning achievement and building students capacity to learn they are about students becoming active to become independent learners and motivating them to achieve their full potential construction of knowledge which means the construction of knowledge is an active process that happens with individual or social engagement, the construction of knowledge happens by building on people's knowledge and experience. All learning is built on what the participants already know and bring with them to be the student to learn. Number four, strategy thinking. Which means, strategy thinking is defined as a mental or thinking process applied by individual in the context of achieving a good or set of goals in a game or other individual. It can be done individually as well as collaboratively among the key people who can positively alternate or organize by the future. Number six. Context of learning. Context of learning means defined as a situation in which something is learned or understood. A situation that can impact how something is to learn or what is taught. For example of learning, context is the external learning environment including the quality of equipment and facilities and the training level of the or students. Children with disabilities are the risk of not fulfilling their education potential and are more vulnerable to serious illness. This exclusion is likely to have a long-term deleterious impact on their life unless services are adapted to promote their inclusions. Disability in childhood can have a lifelong impact on a person's physical, mental, and emotional health. As well as their social situation, children with disability may have special needs, particularly regarding health and education, and may need to negotiate significant social and environmental barriers in order to fully participate in everyday life. Good day, Coach. My name is Shikina Marba. I am going to share my insights about my assigned topic before and the end of our presentation. 
the topic that I will discuss is all about developmental and social factors. What is developmental and social factor? The conditions and variables that influence emotional, intellectual, social, and physical development from conception to maturity. Examples include parental attitudes and stimulation, peer relationships, learning experiences, recreational activities, and hereditary predisposition. It has two principles. It is the developmental influences on learning and social influences on learning. First, developmental influences on learning. As individuals develop, there are different opportunities and constraint learning. For example, financially, when a student has a financial problem, mostly of the students these days, financial problems are really the ones that cause the learning barrier. And I think it's not just financial problems, there are others like health problems or family problems depending on the student's situation that can be an obstacle. But not all the time, it's just a barrier that a student experiences. There are also times and seasons when there is an opportunity to come for them to continue their studies. Learning is most effective when differential development within and across. Next, the social influences on learning. Learning is influenced by social interactions, interpersonal relations, and communications with others. Learning can be enhanced when the learner has an opportunity to interact and collaborate with others on instruction and tasks. Good day, Coach Jude. My name is Rita May I Demokrito. I'm going to share my insights about my assigned topic before the end of our presentation. Individual differences factors. The factors which are commonly designated as causative of individual differences are as follows. Number one, race. Technologies have ex explained many of the supposed differences and have been inclined to place the various races upon a more equal footing with respect to inborn capacity. There may be some different races but there is little scientific evidence that favors the theory of native differences in mental, mental traits. Differences in mentality reflecting influence of country and city life is shown by the study of Negro mentality in relation to time lived in the city. Klinsberg study shows a distinct improvement in the test performance with increasing length of residence of Negros in cities. This study suggests that the superiority of city children over rural children is a direct consequence of better cultural opportunities. In causing differences in physical traits, this factor is prominent. Sex The general result of all studies may point to the fact that the differences between sexes are quite insignificant. In detail, the exact measurements of intellectual ability show a repeat relatively slight superiority of the woman in acceptability of memory and the relatively slight superiority of men in control of movement and in grasp of concrete mechanical situation. Differences in instinctive equipment is shown by the fact that women excel in the nursing impulses and men in the fighting impulses. As to physical equipment, men are much taller, stronger, and bigger than women. However, girls grow more rapidly than boys, especially before adolescence. The girls reach psychological maturity earlier. 3. Heredity by heredity is meant the influence of factors inherent in the child himself from the time he is conceived. Research has shown that heredity proceeds according to certain laws. The first laws of heredity were formulated by Galton, who made a direct investigation on heredity. 4. Maturity Differences in maturity of individuals have always been observed. The pupils in any grade present a considerable range of maturity. The maturity of pupils varies along three lines of development, namely chronological, anatomical, and organic. 
psychological studies reveal that girls mature earlier than boys. It is an accepted fact that the development of an individual is determined by a long interplay of heredity and environment on him. 5. Social and Economic Status On the basis of data supplied by the Army Alpha Test, people living in large centers of population are more intelligent than those living in rural areas. Higher intelligence is found along with better educational facilities. Higher intelligence likewise exists in those states which rank high in their economic condition. There exists a close relationship between occupational, socioeconomic condition and the general level of intelligence. Parents found in high occupational levels usually provide good physical and intellectual environments which favor the steady cultural development of their children. A considerable body of evidence is available to show the children belonging to the so-called higher social classes are superior in intelligence to those of the lower classes.